Okay, here we have some skin that has a really severe amount of sun damage. But over here, there's um, an ulcer. And you can see that the, um, the epidermis disappears and it leaves this thick layer of kind of uh, crust and scale and, and neutrophils all, um, all on top of uh, the ulcer. And at the edge, you can see the epidermis starts getting thicker and kind of more pink and glassy and, and has uh, this reactive change. So you might wonder, well, what happened to cause this ulcer? Let's go over to the other side of the ulcer. We'll keep tracking over here. And there the ulcer ends there. Well, without being given any history, I can tell you what happened to this ulcer, in the, or to cause this ulcer, and the clue is right here. There are two things that you should look for. First, you can see these bright, kind of uh, purpley pink or magenta colored collagen bundles. These collagen bundles have been damaged. And what they've been damaged by is aluminum chloride, which is a chemical hemostatic agent. So this is kind of basically chemical cautery. A dermatologist has done a shave biopsy here. It was probably a cancer. Uh, I think it was a squamous cell cancer in this case. And um, then after they did the biopsy, they, they put uh, aluminum chloride topically on the wound to stop the bleeding. And that aluminum chloride works well to stop the bleeding, but also it leaves some very telltale histologic features that can tell me that this has been biopsy biopsied and had aluminum chloride applied. So when I see these things, I know that there's been a previous biopsy here. This wasn't that just someone scratched their skin. Now, usually we're given that history, but it's really nice to be able to recognize biopsy site changes. So I think that this, uh, for people who are not familiar with it, they might wonder, what are these magenta colored kind of collagen bundles? But these are like basically burned by chemical. And if you see cautery used by electrocautery, it gives you the same kind of change, this kind of distortion of the collagen bundle. So here's more of it, this kind of uh, funny uh, purpley pink color. And you can see that the hair follicles have been sliced right across there by the, by the original biopsy blade. And there's this thick kind of layer of uh, dying fat and, and collagen up here. And um, the other thing that you find with uh, chemical cautery, let's go over to the other side, I think there's some a uh, good example over here is that in addition to these uh, magenta dyeing collagen bundles, you see these large, puffy, kind of granular gray blue histiocytes. Let's see if I can get it to show up here. So these histiocytes, they look like they almost have little gray-blue particles in them, and some people have even said that this reminds them of uh, the parasitized histiocytes that you see in Leishmaniasis or histoplasmosis. I don't personally think it looks much like that, but I can see how if you weren't familiar with this, you could be confused. And um, these, uh, these granular, um, granular and large cytoplasm of these histiocytes is another great clue that there's been aluminum chloride applied here, and again, it, it tells you that there's been a biopsy, that this was not just someone who traumatized their skin, but actually a biopsy was done and aluminum chloride was applied. So this is what normal biopsy site change looks like. So the way I would sign this out, I think, like I said, I think this was a squamous carcinoma and they did an excision. So I would say no residual tumor identified and biopsy site changes are present. So that's usually all that I mentioned. But I find that a lot of times, uh, uh, residents or other people who are not familiar with this will get kind of disturbed by these funny collagen changes, by these abundant histiocytes, and sometimes in you know melanoma excisions, people can even confuse those large histiocytes with melanoma cells. Mel melanocytes can look quite a bit like histiocytes, so you want to be careful to not make that mistake. Also, don't be surprised if you find giant cells in here. The giant cells are trying to clean up that dying collagen. So you'll often see multinucleated giant cells. And here's another view of these kind of granular, large histiocytes that again, they're, they're histiocytes that are engulfing the aluminum chloride. And here's a different slide from the same case. You can see large sebaceous glands over here. So there's some background sebaceous hyperplasia. You can see the reactive changes of the epidermis at the edge of the biopsy site. And you see again these degenerated, burned looking uh, collagen bundles that have that bright magenta color. You see histiocytes. Look, see that histiocyte has a big nucleus and kind of a punctate central nucleolus. If you uh, were uh, not familiar with this, you could get confused and wonder if that might be a melanocyte or a, a melanoma cell or something like that. So you gotta, you gotta really learn to recognize all these funny little changes that we often take for granted. Sometimes they're the only thing that you have on the biopsy or on the excision. And if you're not familiar with all the little variations of normal or benign things, sometimes you'll be tempted to, to misdiagnose those things as cancer.
So you gotta know all of the little features like that to avoid uh, making a misdiagnosis. And I think I, I put this slide in my, uh, my stack here to show you because again, it's got really nice granular change and these big uh, histiocytes with abundant granular cytoplasm. Look, mitosis too, that's okay because there's a lot of reactive reparative change happening at a biopsy site. So it's totally understandable that you're gonna have some mitotic activity there. You're gonna have granulation tissue formation. All those things can kind of look a little scary if you're not familiar with them. And I think in here, if uh, there's more of that uh, chemical cauterized uh, collagen, let me see if I can find it. Ah, yeah. The other reason I wanted to put this slide in is look at this. So this is not, uh, let me show a lower power. These little islands of kind of funny looking um, squamous epithelium here, these are not actually squamous cell carcinoma. These are reactive, what we call pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia, or reactive epidermal hyperplasia. So I find that um, this can be a little bit tricky, and sometimes I even really struggle to tell reactive epidermal hyperplasia from uh, squamous carcinoma. So uh, one way to, to get used to this is when you have an excision of something that's not a squamous cancer, like say a melanoma, make sure you pay close attention to all the variations of reactive change around the biopsy site. That way you can get a good feel for, you know, in the setting where you know that it's not going to be squamous cell carcinoma or that it's very unlikely to be because, you know, they're excising a melanoma. You get a, a chance to see all of the weird uh, reactive squamous changes because squamous epithelium, when it's reactive, can look very scary, very atypical, and it's very easy to misdiagnose it as carcinoma if you're not paying attention. Um, and even if you are paying attention, sometimes you can. So I think that the very irregular shape of the islands, and also I think this is another useful feature, the fact that, see the solar elastosis gets kind of entrapped and kind of taken up in the middle of the epidermis. So the, the uh, reactive squamous uh, proliferation pulls the, um, the elastosis or the collagen fibers and kind of wraps around it. I find that pretty helpful and I, I see that often in reactive um, squamous uh, proliferations. And see, look, you've got a kind of a funny look at mitosis there. So you can have some things that would scare you if you're not, um, if you're not familiar with how weird uh, reactive uh, changes can look in squamous epithelium. So this is kind of a basic simple thing and doesn't seem very exciting, but this is the kind of bread and butter stuff that you have to look at all day long. Sometimes in pathology you see case after case of this and it's really important to be familiar with all of these uh, changes and make sure that you don't uh, misinterpret them. So here's another example of a biopsy site. You can see the normal skin over here and the uh, site where the shave biopsy had previously been done here. And uh, you can see that the, the dermal collagen has this nice bright pink color in the normal dermis, and it's got these thick bundles of collagen. But even from low power, you can tell that there's a zone here that's disrupted. This doesn't have normal dermal collagen. And that's because it's been scooped out with a little shave, a, a razor blade. And you can see, see there's a little bit of the residual dermal collagen here, but all this stuff is, is filled in with those uh, aluminum chloride filled histiocytes and also some granulation tissue. And you can see again very nicely that the um, uh, bundles of burnt kind of degenerated looking collagen that's starting to kind of calcify. And um, as it gets a little older, it starts looking a little bit more kind of a bluish gray color. And then we'll have those uh, bright pink purple kind of areas in it. And um, the histiocytes also sometimes begin to stand out. Um, they, they, this looks a little different um, in early uh, recent biopsy sites versus a little bit older biopsy sites. And eventually it goes away and is replaced completely by scar. But I like this one because the histiocytes here really do, you can see these really large discrete histiocytes with abundant cytoplasm. And the granularity is a little hard to show on video, but if you kind of look at this, um, at the microscope, you can see that there's actually like these little kind of refractile particles. So this kind of pink to uh, grayish kind of colored histiocytes that have a granular cytoplasm that sometimes can have the little granules can almost mimic, um, like they can mimic the organisms of leash mania or things like that. Um, so you don't want to get it confused with that. I think it's actually really helpful though to know about this because when you see this, like I said before, right away you know that this is you're dealing with a biopsy site. The the burnt um, chemical cautery kind of artifact in the collagen, and then those uh, histiocytes. So another example of a biopsy site uh, change in a, in a subsequent excision specimen. And yeah, there's more of it right there. 
So now if you're if your dermatologist don't use aluminum chloride, say they use something else like um, Moncel's solution, which is uh, in in um, in my area, people don't use that as much. That'll leave actually this kind of golden, um, golden orangey brown pigment that looks a lot like hemocytor, and that's because that's made with um, um, an iron uh, preparation, and so it looks different, but it um, is not used as often anymore, it seems.